Salam alaikum. There is an obvious need to quantify bad breath and halitosis in order to establish the diagnosis and monitor the progress of the condition, help in identifying the cause, and uh, evaluate the response to any treatment. In this presentation, we'll go through more than a dozen of tests used for the quantification of bad breath, including the gold standard. The basis for most of these tests is the identification and quantification of volatile molecules contributing to the bad breath. Primarily, volatile sulfur compounds are the most important of these volatile chemicals. These include hydrogen sulfide, methyl mercaptan, and dimethyl sulfide. The first two, hydrogen sulfide and methyl mercaptan, contributes to about 90% of the causes of halitosis intraorally. The third, the dimethyl sulfide, is the, uh, one of the most common causes for extraoral halitosis. Uh, but there are other compounds besides the volatile sulfur compounds that can produce um, bad odor of the breath, including the diamines such as putrescine and the cadaverine. These volatile compounds can produce very offensive uh, breath odor, uh, giving rise to uh, odors like rotten eggs for hydrogen sulfide or rotten cabbage for methyl mercaptan, uh, things like garlic like uh, odor for allyl mercaptan and allyl methyl sulfide. Uh, and a fishy, a rotten fish odor or uh, ammoniacal odor for dimethylamines uh, and trimethylamine um, and a pungent odor for uh, carbon disulfide. The original source for the volatile compounds giving rise to bad breath are uh, certain compounds, mostly uh, amino acids containing sulfur ions and um, these compounds would be located in the back of the tongue and in the gingiva the periodontal membrane we contain some amino acids like for example cysteine or methionine uh, that would would be the substrate for the uh, volatile sulfur compounds and uh, they would also contain things like tryptophan and collagen molecules that produces um, some of the volatile compounds, including indoles and scatols. Um, the amines are produced from uh, some amino acids like arginine and lysine, and there are also some organic acids that produce uh, bad breath, originating from things like uh, glutamate or lysine and there are also ketones produced uh, from the substrate acetoacetate. We'll go through more than a dozen of uh, tests designed to quantify halitosis. There is only one gold standard test against which the validity of all these tests will be established. This or or a gold standard test is the organoleptic scoring system, which is established by an observer smelling the odor of the patient's breath. This is the gold standard uh, test. But we always start with the patient's self-evaluation of his own condition by a questionnaire and also by self-examination of his uh, breath. Uh, so these two tests will be uh, done for every patient presenting with halitosis. There are a group of tests, objective machine-based tests, uh, including the most comprehensive and most sensitive of all the tests, the analysis of the breath by gas chromatography, the more widely available test uh, carried out by a portable volatile sulfur compounds analyzer, and the electronic nose. 
and then there are a group of tests known for specific reasons, including the Banner test to uh, detect proteolytic bacteria and enzymes in the back of the tongue, and three grading systems for the tongue coating, uh, including the Winkles, the Shimuzu, and the Miyazaki uh, tests, and then specific tests for detect ammonia or beta galactosidase or ninohydrine, and finally the salivary incubation test. This is the first step in the assessment of adetosis patients, uh, evaluating the patient's own perception of their condition. And there's a very good reason for this, because there is a very strong correlation between the patient's self-assessment and the objective results obtained from machines like analyzing the uh, volatile sulfur compounds uh, levels and the patient's breath. The patient's own perception would help in confirming the diagnosis, identifying any underlying cause and determining any impact of the condition on their quality of life. Several questionnaires are used. This questionnaire uh, from the Basel University Halitosis questionnaire includes 11 questions that covers uh, areas like how and when did the patient came to notice that he has a problem with bad breath and if this had any impact on his uh, life or his behavior does he smoke or have any special diet or in any list of medications? What steps had the patient taken to improve his condition, including um, things like oral hygiene and mouth washing and uh, tooth brushing, and whether the patient had uh, seeked medical help for this, is he on any specific uh, treatment, and whether the patient agrees that he has a problem with bad breath or not. And these are some of the important precautions that should be taken before the halitosis assessment. Otherwise, the results of the assessment would be affected. The patient should stop eating any spicy food, garlic or onion, between 24 and 48 hours before the assessment. At least 12 hours before the assessment, the patient should stop uh, brushing his teeth or rinsing his oral cavity. Uh, perfume should not be used at least six hours before the examination. He should stop smoking 24 hours before the examination, and ideally he should only have uh, water in the morning of the examination and no food or liquids in the morning of the examination. Initially, the patient would be asked to smell and to score four of his own samples and these samples would be obtained from the scrapping of the posterior part of his own tongue or a toothpick or a dental floss of his own teeth uh, or uh, smelling his own saliva spit it in a small cup or a spoon or smelling his rest after licking his rest with his own saliva and allowing it to dry for a few seconds after smelling all these four samples, the patient would need to score the odor using this six points index, where zero means no detectable odor at all, and five is extremely strong odor, passing through hardly detectable for one, or light odor for two, moderate odor for three, and strong odor for four. The next step would be the organoleptic assessment. This is the assessment and scoring of any malodor in the expired air from the patient's nose and mouth by ideally two uh, trained examiners, usually medical uh, staff. This is considered to be the gold standard in the examination of halitosis patient because it's easy to perform, practical, and more importantly, this it resembles most closely the day-to-day -day situation. 
The human nose is very sensitive to different odors and can distinguish between more than 10,000 different odors. This is much more than any available machine can do. Uh, and the expired air from the nose or from the mouth, uh, 150 different compounds can be identified. This group of organoleptic tests include six and sometimes seven different tests uh, carried out by trained observer on the patient's breath or samples. Starting with a sniffing test in which the observer would smell and grate the odor of the expired air from a distance of 10 centimeters or the expired air after the patient had counted from 1 to 20. Um, smell and score the odor of the patient's rest after the, the patient had licked his rest with his own saliva and the smell and odor of the tongue scraping of the patient using a metal spoon or a plastic spoon and smelling the patient's uh, flossing his teeth by uh, a toothpick or dental floss and smelling the expired air from the nose. If the patient is wearing a prosthesis like a removable denture, this would be the seventh test. There are several scoring systems for these organoleptic tests. The simplest is to score every of these tests from a distance of 10 centimeters first. And if it is positive, the observer would move away to 30 centimeters. If it is uh, still positive, the observer would move away for 100 centimeters from the samples or from the patient. Alternatively, the patient, the observer can use the six point uh, scoring system uh, where score zero means no odor at all and score five means extremely strong odor passing through uh, things like barely detectable for one or uh, mild and moderate and strong for two three and four the organoleptical tests are simple practical inexpensive uh, tests no equipment is needed and the human nose can detect a wide range of odors um, wider than any machine can do. The disadvantages include subjectivity, poor inter and intra-examiner correlation, and reduced reliability, and it's not very reproducible. It's also not always accepted by the patients especially patients who suffer from psychogenic halitosis. Gas chromatography is an objective halitosis uh, test. The gas chromatography, coupled with a flame photometric detector, can be used on the patient's breath, saliva, or scrapings from his tongue. It's very sensitive and is capable of identifying and quantifying minute amounts of the volatile compounds that produces the bad breath. We're speaking about a nanogram level of sulfur in these uh, compounds. It can detect and quantify almost all the different air components that produces bad breath. There are more than 150 different components in the expired air. And by quantifying these, a cutoff level for the diagnosis of halitosis can be established. The halitosis uh, group would have hydrogen sulfide at equal or more than 1.5 nanograms per 100 milliliter and mercaptan of 0.5 nanograms per 100 milliliter. The advantages of the gas chromatography is the ability to separate and quantify all the compounds that can produce bad breath. 
the individual gases, the volatile compounds that can produce bad breath. And it can measure extremely low concentration of these gases at a nanogram level. The disadvantages is the price, uh, the need for skilled uh, personnel. Um, it's not portable and it takes time to produce uh, results. A portable version of the gas chromatograph was developed. This is obviously very useful. It can still detect and quantify the three major volatile sulfur compounds uh, contributing to bad breath. The differentiation between the levels of these three compounds can be helpful in the diagnosis of the etiology of the halitosis. For example, if the mercantile levels are increased, this would point towards periodontitis. If it is hydrogen sulfide that is uh, markedly increased, it's usually the uh, colonization of the bacteria in the back of the tongue. And if it is dimethyl sulfide, it usually uh, indicates an extra oral cause for the halitosis. The portable gas chromatograph can measure extremely low concentration of the gas and the results are more reproducible and reliable than the uh, subjective organoleptic tests. But it is fairly expensive and the results take time to be generated. This is an example of results that can, may be obtained from the gas chromatography it can distinguish between the three major volatile sulfur compounds uh, into three peaks. The first is the hydrogen sulfide, the second is the methyl mercaptan, and the third is the dimethyl sulfide. Um, so if you obtain a result like this, where it's only H2S, the hydrogen sulfide has peaked, this can uh, indicate either physiological halitosis due to, uh, for example, fasting or to a night's sleep, or it can uh, indicate a colonization in the back of the tongue. This can produce a high level of hydrogen sulfide only. Whereas if you get a highly peaked methyl mercaptan as well, this may indicate a disease in the periodontis like periodontitis or pockets. Because volatile sulfur compounds are by far the most important in halitosis, special equipment were developed just to monitor the amount of these sulfur compounds in the uh, patient's breath. These uh, co uh, equipments use an electrochemical reaction to detect the sulfur compounds. They are easy to use and gives an immediate result. And the data uh, given are fairly reproducible and accurate. They are also quite sensitive in that they can detect sulfur compounds in one part per billion of the expired air. If there is sulfur compounds in an amount less than 100 parts per billion, this is fairly normal, between 100 and 180 it's minor halitosis, but above 250, this indicates chronic halitosis. But these sulfide monitoring equipment has some limitations and some disadvantages. The results can be affected in the presence of alcohol or other compounds in the expired air. They are very sensitive to hydrogen sulfide, five times more than they are for, for example, methyl mercaptan. And they are not sensitive at all to dimethyl sulfide. That's why they cannot be used in the assessment of extra oral uh, halitosis that is based on the dimethyl sulfide estimation. They uh, does not measure uh, other halitosis um, gases. They are just focused on the uh, measurement and quantification of volatile sulfur compounds. This is just to sum up the differences between the um, 
resources test that we have been through so far, starting with the gold standard, the organoleptic test, which is easy, practical, and short, inexpensive. It is as close as we can get to the real thing, the real human sensation, and it's not machine-based. On the other hand, the results can vary between examiners and it has low reproducibility. The gas chromatography coupled with the flame uh, photometric detector gives a very accurate results. It can measure the concentration at a nanogram level for all the uh, volatile um, uh, compounds in the expired air. And it can distinguish clearly between the three major um, volatile sulfur compounds. And on the other hand, it's expensive and require trained personnel and it's not portable. The portable sulfide monitor is easy to handle and gives immediate results, uh, but it is sensitive to the presence of alcohol in the uh, expired air and cannot distinguish between the uh, individual volatile sulfur compounds in the, in the halitosis patient. The portable simple gas uh, uh, chromatography is uh, fairly accurate. It's not very expensive. It's less expensive than the uh, conventional gas chromatography, but more expensive than the portable sulfide monitor. It gives accurate results and it is fairly sensitive, but it cannot uh, or it is difficult to measure the dimethyl uh, sulfide in the expired air. Electronic noses are chemical sensors. The equipment will have six metal oxide semiconductor sensors with different sensitivity and selectivity to uh, various uh, compounds in the expired air. They can sense the different, the three different uh, uh, sulfur volatile compounds and can um, quantify them individually. It can be used selectively in, for example, the back of the tongue or directly in the um, gingival or periodontal pockets. So it can measure localized areas in there and the results are fairly accurate. The next group of tests are specific halitosis tests designed to identify a certain cause for the halitosis. Starting with the BANA test, which is designed to identify the proteolytic gram-negative anaerobic bacteria and the short-chain fatty acids colonizing the uh, periodontal pockets and the dorsum of the tongue. A test strip containing certain trypsin substrate called BANA, benzoyl DL arginine nephthalamide, would turn into a blue color if it comes in contact with plaques or pockets containing the proteolytic gram-negative anaerobic bacteria. The test is very sensitive, it is short, takes only a few minutes, and it has a very strong correlation with the presence of periodontal um, pockets and periodontitis. It can also identify three major bacterial groups causing halitosis. The Winkle tongue coating index was developed to quantify the amount of coating of the dorsum of the tongue, which is a major cause for halitosis. The original Winkle test was uh, grades and the coating into zero, where there is no coating at all, and one when there is light coating, and two when it is heavy coating. We do this for six different areas of the tongue dorsum and add the scores together. A modification for this um, index was um, proposed by Landegren. He uh, suggested that the number one, the middle light coating should be omitted. It's either no coating or, uh, or positive coating and it can show with his results that this gives a better, more accurate results since the light coating usually reflects the um, keratinization of the papilla of the tongue rather than actual 
coating. So this is one uh, way of scoring the tongue coating. Two other uh, coating scoring systems were developed. One was suggested by Miyazaki, uh, which is basically a four points scoring system. Zero is no coating and three is a very heavy coating covering more than two thirds of the dorsum of the tongue. If less than one third of the dorsum of the tongue, it is uh, number one. If between one third and two thirds, it's number two and more than two thirds is number three. And the Shimsy index scoring index has three points scoring system. Zero is lack of coating and two is thick coating where you cannot identify the papilla on the dorsum of the tongue and one is thick thin coating when you can only see the papilla of the tongue and the rest of the tongue dorsum is not visible. This test is designed to identify the enzyme beta glycosidase which is an important uh, enzyme in the production of bad breath and halitosis. The first step in the formation of halitosis is the deglycosylation of the glycoproteins before the, uh, uh, the uh, amino acids containing these proteins are putrefied and produce the uh, volatile sulfur compounds. The activity of this enzyme beta galactosidase can be detected and quantified using uh, paper strips with a certain color substrate. When it comes in contact with the saliva, there is a color change which can be detected and quantified, indicating the presence of this important enzyme. There is also a specific test for the detection of ammonia released in the uh, expired air and producing halitosis. Diamines such as putrescine and cadaverine can produce a very offensive odor in the breath and they are not usually covered by the equipment or the test and designed primarily to detect the volatile sulfur compounds. They can be detected with the nihydrine calorimetric reaction and gives a fairly accurate, fast and easy uh, results. The patient's saliva can be incubated in sealed tubes uh, kept at 37 degrees centigrade. And these incubated tubes can then be tested for the malodorous compounds and the results are uh, extremely accurate when compared with the gold standards. Measurements of inflammatory markers in the blood of patients with halitosis can give some significant but rather non-specific changes in these markers. There is generally a significantly higher white blood counts with a certain uh, cut-off point in the count of the white blood corpuscles. There is also a higher neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and higher uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And finally, some of the newer developments in the halitosis diagnosis, including uh, a new equipment that can measure both the volatile sulfur compounds as well as the polyamines. This is a portable colorimetric test. And there is also a, a tenita breath alert test, which can be used by the patients for their self-assessment of their uh, malodor. And there is a, a newer microsulfide sensor that can be used by dentists to uh, identify sulfur, volatile sulfur compounds in various concentrations in um, things like uh, periodontal pockets or certain areas of the oral cavity.